Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma bada habata fillah Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Imam Abdulaziz bin Baz rahmatullahi alayhi was asked In some Muslim countries we notice that there are people who circumambulate around graves Not knowing that this is wrong What is the religious ruling on those people? And can we consider them mushriks? Those people who are polytheists in their worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Imam Abdulaziz stated, The religious ruling on any person who supplicates to idols, asks them for help, and the like is obviously decided. This act is major disbelief, kufr, unless the doer of it assumes that their circumambulation, meaning going around the graves, is devoted to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just as when they circumambulate around the Kaaba, out of out of wrong belief in the permissibility of circumambulating around the graves. If they do not mean by this act to draw themselves closer to their dwellers, rather they mean to draw closer to Allah alone, in such a case, this person is considered a mubtadiyah, an innovator in the religion of Islam, not a kafir, a disbeliever. Circumambulating around graves is a condemned bid'ah. Just like offering salat at the graves, all such acts are a means leading to kufr. In most cases, people who worship at graves aim at drawing closer to the dwellers by circumambulating around them. They sacrifice animals and vow for their sake in order to draw closer to them. Such acts are major disbelief. Anyone who dies while persisting in doing such acts is a kafir. They should not be washed, they should not have the funeral prayer performed for them, or be buried in the Muslim's graveyard. In the hereafter, their case is, for, is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to judge. If they are one of those to whom da'wah has not reached them, they will have the same ruling as that of Ahl al-Fitr, meaning the people of who, who da'wah has not reached, uh, reached them in an uncorrupted manner. The evidence for this is drawn from what happened to the Prophet Wasallam's mother as she died before she witnessed the era of the Prophethood Wasallam, while embracing the religion of her people. The Prophet Wasallam asked the permission of his Lord to seek forgiveness for his mother, but he Wasallam, was not permitted to ask forgiveness for her because she died while embracing the religion of the uh, of Jahiliyyah, the pre-Islamic time of ignorance. And so was the case of his father. When the Prophet ﷺ was asked by some person about his father, he ﷺ said, Verily my father and your father are in the hellfire. His father died in Jahiliyyah while embracing the religion of his people. So he was judged as a disbeliever. But anyone who has not received the da'wah in the life of this world and he died, died while ignorant of the truth will be tried on the day of resurrection according to the soundest opinion of the scholars. If they succeed in saying the truth, they will be admitted into paradise. But if they oppose the truth, they will be cast into the hellfire. This applies to all people of Ahla Fitr, Ahla Fitr, to whom da'wah has not reached, according to the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we never punish until we have sent a messenger to give warning. Regarding those whom the Qur'an or the mission of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reached, but they did not respond, the evidence that leaves no excuse for those who reject it has been established against them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this Qur'an has been revealed to me that I may therewith warn you and whomsoever it may reach. This ayah means that whomsoever the Qur'an has reached, they have been warned thereby. Allah the Exalted and Mighty says, the Qur'an is a message for mankind and a clear proof against them in order that they may be warned thereby. Therefore, those to whom the Qur'an and Islam have reached, but they did not embrace it, will come under the same ruling as disbelievers. It has been authentically reported by the Prophet on the Prophet that he said, By him in whose hand my soul is, 
any Jew or Christian of this nation who hears about me and dies unbelieving in what I have been sent with will be amongst the inhabitants of the hellfire. And this is in Sahih uh, Muslim. In this hadith, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, regarded the fact of hearing about his mission as an evidence against the hearer. To sum up, whoever shows any signs of disbelief while in Muslim lands will come under the same rulings as disbelievers. As to whether or not they shall be saved on the day of resurrection, this is in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they are one of those to whom the da'wah has not reached or have not heard about the mission of the Messenger وسلم, they will be tried on the day of resurrection. According to a hadith narrated by Al-Aswad ibn Sarf, uh, in which he said, then it will be said to them, get into it. If they agree to enter the fire, the flame of the fire will turn into cool. Uh, coolness and safety for them however if they refuse the flame of the fire will coil around them and they will be taken into the fire may Allah safeguard us all in conclusion whoever did not know about the dawah whether for having been in the distant outskirts of this world or was born and died before the time of the dawah or whoever knew about the dawah but was insane absent-minded or too old to perceive it they and those like them and the children of the mushriks, meaning the polytheists, who died in their childhood before reaching the age of puberty will be in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ta'ta mishiyatillah. Verily, Allah the Exalted knows well what they would do. That was the answer of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was asked about such people on the day of resurrection. Allah the Exalted will make his knowledge about them evident by testing them. Whoever succeeds will be admitted into paradise and whoever fails will be admitted into hellfire. Verily, there is neither might nor power except with Allah. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.